Okay, so I've been working on a number of different things. One of those is this introduction to sign distance fields post. The other, if we scroll down this page, is interactive examples on the page because I wanna do more interactive examples in my videos, in my posts, et cetera, and I had to find a way to embed them on the page. So this is the first test for that. And we'll be going through them as we get an introduction to sign distance fields. Now, sign distance fields can render beautiful images like this one right here. If we click on this example, it takes us to the Shader Toy website, in which case you can see that this actually rotates and moves around and whatnot. Now that shader is pretty intense and it may have messed with the audio. So we're gonna go back to looking at the still image, but everything inside of this scene is a signed distance function or a signed distance field. But we're not gonna get this intense. We're gonna talk about 2D signed distance fields instead of this has quite a few additional concepts in it. Suffice it to say that if you take what you learn about 2D signed distance fields and you extend that to 3D, it works just fine. It's the same thing. I'm mostly interested in sign distance fields as a tool for powering ray marching, which we're going to talk about in a different video and a different post. So what are sign distance fields? And to explain this, I'm gonna keep this example up on the site. So if you don't know what they are already, then you can think of them from the perspective of an image, like the image you're looking at right now. If you think of the pixels in this image as a 2D grid, then each pixel has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. At each pixel, we can take the XY position and give it to this signed distance field function. That function then returns how far we are from the closest edge of the SDF shape. The shape can be anything from circles to boxes, to triangles, to rounded X's, to cool S's. It can be a single one of these. It can be multiple of these put together. It can be an entire scene like we saw earlier. So for all of the pixels in this image, we're calculating the corresponding F32 return distance from whatever pixel we're at to this shape. If we visualize that like we are seeing here, we do have to constrain those numbers in some way, but it's still going to be a 2D grid plane. The biggest thing to remember here is that signed distance fields are signed. So all of the values outside of the shape that we've defined are positive and all of the points inside of the shape are going to have negative distances. That means that anything on this edge, anything on the edge of this triangle, anything on the edge of this square, anything on the edge of this circle, all of those values are zero. That's why when we visualize this, it looks black because we're taking that SDF value, we're taking that distance, we're using it as all three components of a color, and we're mixing that between two colors. So for the positive area from the edges out, we're mixing it from black to orange, and from the edge in, we're mixing it from black to blue. This is just so that we can identify the area that is negative and the area that is positive. And of course, if you're interested in the specifics of how these visualizations are rendered, there is a repo here. I'll link it in the description. That's not terribly important though. So here's a function that is an SDF, or defines a sign distance field written in Rust. In this case, it's a circle. So it takes a point that's a VEC2, that's an X and a Y value. Those are the pixels we talked about earlier. And it returns us an F32. That's a float, it's a distance. So it's how far we are from whatever shape we've defined. In this case, we're defining a circle. So we need a radius and we need to place that circle somewhere. So in this case, we've placed that circle at the origin, zero, zero. This VEC2 splat sets the X and the Y values to the same value, whatever we pass in, in this case, zero. So the center of the circle is at the origin of our 2D space. We've got a radius of zero. 0.5, and then we can calculate the distance from whatever point we're at, whatever pixel we're at, to the center of the circle. That calculation gives us this ray. So up in the top left, you can see the distance. So we're working with a coordinate system here that has a zero, zero point in the center. At the top or bottom, it's basically one. And then at a similar distance, X and Y, it's also one, uh, but our width is a little bit bigger than a height because you know we're on a computer monitor. So our left and our right can go further than one, but this is the idea. We're calculating the distance from whatever pixel our mouse is on to the center of the circle. Given that distance, we also know the radius. So we can subtract the radius from that distance. And if we subtract the radius from that distance, we get a vector or this ray here that comes from the edge of the circle to wherever our cursor is. And this works for all points outside of the circle, as well as all points inside of the circle. There is a closest edge that we can define as the distance from our pixel to the center minus the radius of the circle. And in the top left in this example, you can see distance to shape. It is momentarily important to note that we do already know this is a circle. And because we know this is a circle and because we know the algorithm used to generate this sign distance field, we can draw this ray. But in reality, the sign distance field function does not give you direction or angle or anything like that. All you get back is the distance from your pixel to the closest point, wherever that is. 
So circles are one of the simpler examples, one of the smaller examples. There's this giant list of 2D distance functions. They will look a little bit different than the ones that I'm showing you. This is because the radius is often defined as an argument or anything like that is defined as an argument. And then they are assuming that your shape is centered at the origin. So they don't need to deal with, you know, the distance from the origin to whatever. They are just assuming that it is and P dot length or the point dot length, the magnitude of the vector from wherever you are is that distance from the origin to wherever you are. So this is the same as the distance calculation we just did minus the radius. And you can do a whole bunch of different shapes. There are boxes, there are circles, parallelograms, triangles, there are uneven capsules and pentagrams, octagons, hexagrams, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of them here if you wanna go look at them. They are all written in GLSL, so you will have to do a little bit of translation if you're trying to understand them. So our box equation gets a little bit more complicated. Again, it takes in a vector, it takes in a point wherever we are on the screen, and it returns us some distance, how far we are away from the box. If we define that box to be 0.5 by 0.5, these are called half extents in some cases. So what this is, is half of the distance to the side of a box in each direction. So in this case, it's if we centered a box at 0, 0, and it was 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for our X and our Y size, then we would have 0.5 to the right of zero and 0.5 to the left of zero. Same thing for the Y coordinate, 0.5 above, 0.5 below. So the total size from edge to edge is one because we have half of the distance as the size here. We then calculate a distance vector. We'll go over this in a second. But TLDR is we take whatever point we have because this is the first SDF equation that we're seeing that uses a neat trick actually. There are four quadrants, which we'll look at in a second. So we always treat everything as if it's in the top right quadrant. So that that means no matter where our cursor is, we are treating it like it's in that top right. If we're down here, it's in a similar place in the top right. If we're in the top left, if we are in actually the top right quadrant, then it's the same and so on and so forth. So it's kind of mirrored in four ways to always look like it's in the top right quadrant. That's what point dot ABS is doing, the absolute value of the point. And then we're doing a number of calculations based on that. So once we're in the top right quadrant, size is going to be the top right corner of the box. And we do two calculations here. One is the distance vector off the corner, and the other one is for interior sizes. So we can look at a visualization for what this equation is doing. Again, because we know already what it is doing, that's the only reason we can draw all these rays and stuff, but we're looking at a debugging example effectively. So if we're up here, you can see that the distance vector basically just goes up from the top edge of the square. If we're over here, it's gonna be the distance from that edge to our point. That's how far we are. If we're down here, it's the distance horizontally. If we're inside of this box, it will be whichever edge is closer. So in this case, the X edge is closer. In this case, the Y edge is closer and so on and so forth. This visualization is available on the site if you want to play around with it to get a better understanding of what's going on here. But again, it's important, really important to realize that all we have from these equations are the distance. So this is the view our equation actually has of the environment. It doesn't know where anything is. It doesn't know what shape is on the screen. All we know is how close we are. So we can tell the circle here is getting bigger. We're getting further away from whatever the shape is. If we go this way, we're getting a little bit closer. So now we're getting very close and very close. And now we're super close to whatever shape this is. So if you draw this circle around, this is constantly calculating how far away from the shape we are and rendering that distance as the radius of this circle, then we can trace this shape and kind of figure out, you know, what's here. It looks like, you know, we can go up and the shape and the circle doesn't really change. We can go horizontally and the circle doesn't really change. And then we've got this kind of like, I don't know, diagonally kind of line. And of course, it's much easier if we turn the proverbial lights on, right? If we show you the shape, in this case, it is a triangle. This triangle is an SDF function for any distance values that are less than zero on the screen, any of our pixels, those are being rendered as white. Anything that is positive is being rendered as black. So in this case, this visualizes how far we are from the edge of this triangle. Now this may not seem like a lot of information. All we have is this distance, but you can actually use that distance in many ways, especially in one technique called ray marching that we'll get into in a different video. If we're way out here and we want to get closer to some object and we're moving in some direction, we know that this circle defines how far we can move without hitting anything. 
because an SDF always gives us the distance to the closest object. SDFs have a bunch of different uses. You'll be able to find a lot of them on Shader Toy for rendering purposes, for rendering shadows, or one of the things that I'm really interested in is global illumination. They pop up all over the place. They're in Blender these days. They're in some product that Adobe just announced that I forget the name of. But yeah, so the visualizations on the site don't work on mobile that well. I would suggest viewing it on desktop, but I hope you enjoyed this little dive into some visualizations that I've been working on and this small topic of sign distance fields. I'll see you in the next video.